This is an A-level and IB psychology video outlining Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. Spearman's rank is a test of relationship or correlation, and because of this, it uses covariables, not an independent and dependent variable. It uses ordinal data as a minimum, but can also use interval or ratio data. This is the formula for Spearman's rank, and we're going to break this down step by step over the next few slides to discuss what each of these components means. So the hypothesis we're going to test is males with more testosterone will be more aggressive. So we're looking at the relationship between testosterone and aggression. This is a breakdown of the different steps in calculating Spearman's rank. So the first thing we're going to do is rank both step sets of data. We're going to find the difference between the ranks for each participant, square this difference to cancel out any minus signs, add up the total and then multiply this by six. We're then going to find the number of participants we have, times that by itself and minus one, multiply that by n and then divide this answer to the answer that we found in step six uh, by the answer found in step eight and then we're going to subtract this from one. Again this doesn't really help to clarify but going through it step by step will. So the first thing we need to do is rank both sets of data separately. So we're going to rank testosterone and we're going to rank aggression and this is helping us find this element of our formula the d squared the difference squared but we haven't quite got to the difference yet. So we do the ranking and I've done that for you. So if we look here, the smallest number was three, so that gets a rank of one. Four was the next score, so that gets a rank two. We then have three scores of four, which would take rank three, four, and five. Because there are three of them, they have to have the same rank, and the middle number would be four, so they all get four, which then leads six to take the rank of six. Um, over here, in terms of aggression, the same principles apply. So ranking, our smallest number for aggression was five, so that would take position one and two, so we give them an equal position of 1.5. We would then look for the next score, which is six, and they get the rank of 3.5 because they would take position three and four. And then we have rank five for seven and rank six for 10. So the next thing we need to do is figure out the difference between the ranks for each participant. So four take away six is minus two. Six minus 1.5 is 4.5. 4 minus 3.5 is 0.5 and so on and so forth. So now we've found the difference between the ranks, we now need to square it. So step three is we square the difference as this cancels out the minus signs. So we found the difference in the last slide and now we need to square it. So 2 times 2 is 4, so on and so forth. Remember in the exam you will be allowed to use a calculator so don't panic too much if you're not very good at squaring numbers. The next step is to add up the total. So this is going to give us the sigma number here in the formula. So 4 adds 20.25, 0.25, 0 0.25, 6.25 and 1 gives us a total of 32. We then need to multiply that answer that we've just found, 32, by 6, which gives us the next step in the formula, which is circled above. This gives us the answer of 192. So we bear all that in mind, that's the top part of the formula done. We now need to do the bottom part, which is slightly easier, but looks complicated. So the first thing we need to do is find n, and we've got six participants, so that's fairly straightforward. We then need to times n by n minus 1. So n times n, 6 times 6 is 36, and we take away 1, and that gives us the answer of 35. That's all the information in the brackets, that's n squared. We then need to multiply that answer by n, so 35 times 6 is 210. We then need to divide the answer that we calculated previously, the top aspect of the formula, um, to the answer that we've just calculated. So 192 minus 210, which gives us the answer of 0.91, and we then subtract this from 1, which is the final element of the formula, as you can see here. So we then have to use that to help us look at the critical values. So to be significant for Spearman's rank, our observed value must be equal or greater than the critical value. We have a critical values table here for a one-tailed test, which is what we're looking at. We're saying going, there's going to be more testosterone and more aggression. Our calculation was 0 0.09. And if we look at n equals 6, because we had six participants, at p, 0 0.05, which means the probability of our results being due to chance is less than or equal to 5%. The answer is 0.829. Now, obviously, the critical value is much bigger than ours, so we have not found an effect. To be significant, our observed value must be equal or greater than the critical value, which it was not. 
Therefore, we accept our null because we found no effect and there is more than a 5% probability that our results are due to chance. The alternative hypothesis is rejected because there was no effect and the alternative hypothesis would state that there would be. So overall, there was no relationship between levels of testosterone and aggression. That was a brief video for A-level and IB psychology students outlining Spearman's rank correlation.